What's up guys, welcome back. We've done a few somewhat healthier recipes on the channel lately, but this is not one of them. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this fully loaded chicken bacon ranch baked potato. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell to enable notifications as well. All right guys, beat me in the kitchen, let's make it happen. First things first, let's take a look at all of these ingredients. This is one of those recipes that comes together pretty quickly with very few ingredients, and all of these flavors sing together beautifully like a Broadway play, a relatively carbonated heavy Broadway play, but hey, we're here for a good time, not a long time. All right, first things first, let's get the bacon in the oven. We're gonna preheat that oven to 425 degrees. We're gonna lay out some aluminum foil on a baking sheet for easy cleanup, and we're gonna put our thick cut bacon right into the oven. You wanna flip it every few minutes until it's nice and crispy. And now it's time to prep our chicken. We grab one of these rotisserie chickens from the grocery store on sale for $5.99. You really can't beat that. We're gonna set those wings aside for our snack, and then we're gonna break down this bird and use the chicken to go into this fully loaded baked potato. A rotisserie chicken makes this super easy, but you can use any leftover chicken that you might have in the refrigerator. And all you wanna do here, guys, is remove the bone, skin, cartilage, basically anything that could damage your teeth. You really wanna use mostly white meat, but you could throw some dark meat in there as well. And you can set aside any leftovers for a little snack in the meantime, or use it for meal prep, or just throw it in another recipe. As you can see here, we have all of our breast meat with no bone, skin, or cartilage. We're gonna break out the knife and chop these into bite-sized pieces. You wanna chop this relatively small, that way it fits nicely into the potato mixture that we're gonna do. There we go, that's about three cups of chopped chicken. Depending on how many potatoes you're making, you may need more or less. And now we're gonna grate our own cheese. It melts a little better when you do it yourself. We have one block of Colby Jack here along with some mozzarella. You can use whatever cheese you like. Cheddar works great. Really guys, use whatever you have in the refrigerator. Don't go to the store and buy some specialty cheese. Use whatever cheese you like that you already have on hand. That's what it's all about guys. Using what you already have, not having to spend any extra money at the grocery store. I know right now prices are through the roof across the board. So let's keep these things nice and cost effective. Next, we're moving on to our russet potato. As you can see, this is a relatively large russet potato. There's my hand for comparison. You wanna try to find one that's evenly shaped and pretty big. That way we can stuff it nicely with all of these delicious flavors. Now, as we always say with potatoes, they come from the store pretty dirty, so you wanna wash them off. Make sure you use a paper towel to really scrub the potatoes, especially if you're gonna eat the skin. You wanna make sure that the skin is nice and clean like you see right here. Now, with potatoes, you have two options. We could pop them in the oven or we could put them in the microwave. If you're pressed for time, definitely go with the microwave option as it's a lot faster than the oven. The oven's gonna take at least an hour depending on the size of the potato. Either way you go, you do wanna poke some holes in the potato to allow some steam to escape. You don't want a potato to explode. I know it's a rare thing to happen, but it does happen on occasion. So make sure you poke some holes in the potato, whether you're putting it in the microwave or into the oven. You can use a fork like you see me doing right here or use a sharp paring knife. Either way, both of them get the job done. There we go. We're gonna pop ours in the microwave today because we ain't got time for that. But if you wanna put it in the oven, no big deal. Put it in there at 400 degrees until it's nice and tender. And now we're gonna dice up some green onion. We're gonna add that both to our filling and for our garnish at the end. Once we have the green onion prepped, you can set that aside and then we're gonna dice this bacon up into bite-sized pieces. That also is gonna go into the mixture and on top for garnish. If you don't like pork bacon, you can use turkey or beef for this recipe as well. This is packed with flavor, guys. I can't wait for you guys to try this loaded baked potato. Chicken bacon ranch flavors just blend together so nicely. This is super filling, comes together really quickly. Gotta have a little bacon as we go. Make sure you taste as you go, guys, super important. As you can see here, we have our potato nice and tender. We're gonna take our knife and slice the top off like you see right here. This is the technique I like to use when I'm doing a twice baked potato or really any baked potato for that matter. So pop the top off the potato like you see right here. Then we're gonna let that cool down for a couple minutes. That's super important so you don't burn your hands because this bad boy is very hot as you can see. Once it cools down enough for you to handle it, we're gonna use a spoon to scoop out the inside of the potato. And then essentially we're gonna add that to a mixing bowl and make some mashed potatoes with all the fixings. Then we're gonna restuff that potato and pop it into the oven. As always guys, the specific measurements and ingredients are provided for you in the description box below. So don't forget to check that out. You can make this recipe with as many potatoes as you want, feed a crowd, you can turn this into potato skins if you want to, really a million different ways you can spin this one. We're going in with two to three tablespoons of butter. I like to use Kerrygold butter because it's my favorite. It's grass fed, a little bit healthier for you. We're gonna mix in that butter, allow that to melt. And then we're going in with our potato masher to begin mashing these potatoes. You can use a ricer if you want a real fine mash, but it doesn't really matter that much on this type of recipe. There we go, a nice handheld potato masher gets the job done, going old school today. 
Next, we're gonna season this up. I'm going in with my all-purpose seasoning. If you don't have this yet, you can grab that via the link in my description box. There's a discount code for you there as well. Make sure you season the inside of your potato also. Now we're going in with about a half cup of sour cream, followed by a quarter cup or so of ranch dressing. You can taste as you go and adjust the flavor to your preference. I like to go in with a little ranch seasoning as well to really beef up the ranch flavor. But again, guys, you can season as you go, taste as you go, and adjust accordingly. Now we're going in with some of that shredded cheese and some of the bacon. Again, you can use whatever cheese you like. Today we're using a little Colby Jack and mozzarella. They both melt beautifully and they're pretty mild. We added some green onion for some flavor and a pop of color. And you just wanna fold all of that in. You can't have chicken, bacon, ranch, potatoes without chicken, so we're going in with that rotisserie chicken that we chopped up earlier. Fold that in as well. Give it one final taste test to make sure we nailed the flavor. Once you got it right where you want it, we're gonna stuff those potatoes and pop them into the oven. This is one of those recipes that you can customize quite a bit, guys. If there's anything else you wanna add to this, then feel free. If you want it to be a little bit creamier, you can mash the potatoes a little bit finer, add a little more sour cream or some heavy cream. If you want them lumpy like this, then just follow the recipe I have in the description box. One final taste test. You know this is gonna be money. We seasoned our potatoes. We're also gonna add a little bit of cheese at the bottom, cause why the hell not? And then we're gonna stuff this until our heart is content. I do like to use this baking sheet with aluminum foil for easier cleanup. We're gonna preheat the oven to 375 degrees and we're gonna stuff these as high as we can. Oh man, I'm getting hungry just watching this. There we go. We're gonna hit that with a little bit more seasoning right on top. And then we're gonna to top it with a little bit more cheese. We wanna make sure that that melts beautifully over top of the potato. Leave me a comment and let me know how many calories you think this potato is. So once you have your cheese piled high, we're gonna pop that in a 375 degree oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until the cheese is golden brown and bubbly and melted beautifully like you see right here. We're gonna plate this up, a little sour cream on top, followed by those bacon bits that we chopped up earlier. Oh man, this is gonna be good. Little green onion for a pop of color. And only thing missing is my fork so I can get in there for a taste test. Brace yourself for a trademark money shot. Say it with me guys, looking good. Going in for the taste test, here's the moment of truth. I think we all know how this is gonna end. Oh man, this is definitely a fork drop recipe. Give this one a try, let me know what you think in the comments. Make sure you give your boy a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and the bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.